Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Dell. This is going to be a quick video with some images and a video tour of my 2018 ProMaster van. This van is the 2500 model and the 159 length. It was essentially a bare cargo van when I bought it. I've since converted my van to a weekend adventure van. Some of the main features that I've added to my van are a Max Air fan, 400 watt solar panels, 23 gallon fresh water tank, a 10 gallon gray water tank, a water pump with a sink, a 3000 watt inverter, four large 6 volt batteries, eight LED lights for lighting, two dimmer switches, two on off switches for the lights, uh, three different 110 volt plugs, and USB chargers. My van also features a full-size queen bed. I made a custom kitchen area and kitchenette with custom walnut doors. The van is fully insulated and from the outside it just looks like a normal cargo van. The first thing I did with my van is plan out the electrical. I kind of wanted the electrical to be installed and concealed before I did anything else. After the wiring was completed, I installed the Max Air fan in the roof. After I installed the Max Air fan, I installed tongue and groove pine on the ceiling and drilled holes for the electrical that I had ran. I also used some fiberglass insulation to fill in the gaps uh, in the upper corners of the van. I installed half inch foam board on the floor and over the top three quarter inch plywood. The reason I went with the thinner insulation is because I was trying to maximize the headroom inside the van. We had some leftover 2 inch foam at work and I used a lot of that for the insulation on the walls. For the van walls I installed furring strips. This gave me a great place to mount the tongue and groove. For the 110 volt plugs I used what's called a remodel box. Basically all you have to do is cut a hole that's rectangle shape and install the electrical box. I custom cut some plywood and boards to fit in the corner to give the van a more finished look. On the sliding door I used tongue and groove. It was about 5 8 inch thick. Uh, any thicker probably couldn't get the door open but it worked out pretty good for me. I used poplar wood to build a cabinet carcass and I purchased a cabinet countertop from Home Depot. I essentially cut the back of the countertop off and shortened it so it would fit my needs. For the passenger side of the van I built a steel rack. This rack holds all the batteries and it also holds the inverter. This rack has a little bit of extra storage and it also supports the bed. On the driver's side of the van I built another custom rack. This rack holds the 23 gallon freshwater tank and also the 10 gallon gray water tank. This rack also supports the other side of the bed. These racks were both later fitted with sliding doors so they look better. I built a small closet on the passenger side just behind the sliding door. This is where all the electrical is kept and it also has some extra storage. One challenge I didn't take on myself was making the cabinet doors and the drawer faces. I actually ordered these online they're walnut, they're really nice. I did have to finish them, but I think I made the right decision. I let the professionals do it. In this picture you see some plastic. Uh, basically that was to keep the dust out of the front area. I did wind up actually buying some blankets from Home Depot, some, some of those moving blankets. And I put a layer of those up as curtains, and then I had some actual curtains that looked better and uh, I like the insulation that it gives. It, it makes it so it can make the van completely dark inside. Uh, people can't see from the outside if you have lights on. And you can still transition from the front of the van to the back of the van if you really want to. An important part of my design was making sure that my mountain bike would fit in the back of the van. I also thought it would be nice to have a washdown pump so I included that. Next I'll take you on a quick video tour of the completed van.
Okay guys, when I step into my van, this is what I see. I've got this big countertop here. And what I've done is I've put in a sink. It's got a, a water pump, a 12 volt pump. I'll show you that in a bit here. But it's also, uh, it's feeding off of a 23 gallon fresh water tank. I also have a 10, 10 gallon gray water tank as well. So, um, I've got some upper cabinets, some storage up here, and uh, basically this is where I keep food, coffee, stuff like that. Got a book up there. And then down below, I actually have a 120 volt fridge. And this isn't any fancy fridge. This is a fridge from uh, Home Depot, I believe. And I don't have much in it right now because I'm not really um, on a weekend trip. But it's got a little mini ice box and uh, probably enough uh, room in there for maybe two weeks worth of, worth of dry camping, I'd say. Underneath the sink here, got my garbage. I keep a little, there's one of the propane tanks for... Uh, I use that for my little heater and a um, box for my coffee maker, some bags, fire extinguisher, bug spray, air freshener, just all that miscellaneous stuff. There's a cutting board down there. Nothing too exciting. All of my cabinets are soft clothes and it kind of helps with uh, when you're driving, they don't seem to uh, want to fly open, so that's good. The drawers, I just have some silverware in here, and then uh, pots and pans. Nothing too exciting there. So looking towards the back of the van is the bed. This is a queen size bed. It's a full size, but it's a little bit shorter. It's like maybe, call it a, a short queen. So same width as a queen, but just a couple inches shorter. I'm only 5'11", so I fit on there fine. Um, it's really a lot bigger and wider than you need. Uh, I think at some point I may uh, add some storage or something over here for clothing on this this general area right here. And I don't think that, that uh, even two people, I think you could fit on a, you know, a full or a twin for couple nights if you needed to. So one thing that I have above my bed is a Max Air fan. I like this fan because you can vent air even when it's raining and not get rain in the van. This is just a fixed three-speed fan but really uh, I think it's all I need. So when you step up into the van I put this grab handle and it's nothing more than a basically a shower uh, bar, you know one of those grab bars for the shower. The other two things that are on the wall here is there's a, another on off and dimmer switch for the four lights towards the front end of the van. And um, I don't know if you can see that, but you can basically dim the lights independent of what's going on with the lights over the bed. You can also just shut them off completely. So around the corner to the left as you walk into the van, there's two cabinets. And these cabinets, um, you know, they have some miscellaneous things just stored in them. You know, for example, this one I've got, I think, a lantern. I've got some binoculars. And I've got a fire extinguisher. That's actually a backup fire extinguisher. But this is basically, uh, this is a lot of my electrical controls. So up there, the you know, where the green light's blinking, that's the the charge controller for the solar panels. So I have four 100 watt solar panels on top of the van and uh, those those basically charge up four 6 volt uh, batteries, very heavy duty industrial batteries I'll show you here in just a little bit. So some of the other things I put in here was uh, I wanted breakers for everything. I didn't want any shorts that were going to you know, start a fire or anything like that. One very important thing with any van is, I don't know if you can see it, but that thing, it says split charge controller. That basically makes it so 
you can charge the house batteries uh, from the the van battery so if you uh, without worrying about killing the van battery you don't want to be out in the middle of nowhere run down your house batteries and then not be able to start the van so it's nice to be able to start the van and charge the house batteries off the alternator and at the same time be able to you know just automatically disconnects if the the voltage on the house batteries drops low so the other lower cabinet here to the left of the the main entrance has uh, basically it's just got some it's mainly used for storage you know I'm I'm storing some water and some tin foil some drinking water I should say but this black thing up above what that is is basically it's a fuse panel from a RV and that kind of gives me good fuse protection for all of my lights and and, and 120 volt stuff uh, it's just a you know good safety precaution so underneath the bed uh, right now there's not a ton of stuff because I'm not really on a on a trip but there is the uh, Dometic toilet and I'll talk a little bit more about that later but I also have uh, to the left here this is where my um, where my inverter is I have a 3000 watt inverter I don't know if you can see it very well but that's where that's kept and then I also have uh, that's where my my batteries are stored my four six volt batteries on the driver's side right behind the counter there's another sliding door and in here is my 12 volt water pump below that is the 10 gallon uh, it's a gray water tank so basically there's a pipe from the sink that goes uh, basically behind this middle drawer and then goes directly into that tank and the gray water tank can it drains out directly through the floor so it's kind of concealed for the seating in my van I actually have some of these uh, portable they're they're almost like footstools from from Target the lid just comes off and I store bottled water in there but I like the whole idea of having seating that is uh, you can basically move it anywhere in the van so right now I've got an additional seating uh, uh, ottoman or footstool back there okay so this is the back of my van and again the bed is high enough that I can uh, take the front wheel off of my mountain bike and then I've got a mount right here for the forks. Uh, on the doors, I've just got some tongue and groove pine. This is a thinner version. It's probably about three eighths of an inch thick. Uh, back here, I've got this green hose. It's uh, basically a used for wash down. There's a switch right here that turns on the uh, 12 volt water pump, and then you can basically use this to uh, wash things down on the driver's side of the van in the back there's a sliding door and that right there is my 23 gallon water tank and it's set up so that if you need to drain the tank completely you can open a valve and it just drains through the bottom uh, of the van you can't really see where it drains uh, to fill the tank you can fill it right here on the passenger side of the van I've got a camp stove there just as a backup I don't normally use it down here at the bottom it's a Coleman stove and then I've got again I've got four six volt batteries that are on that side Right here, there's a couple towels, some propane tanks, that sort of thing. Just a little little bottles for the camp stove. These compartments back here are, they do have a little storage bag, but uh, mainly the the whole purpose of those is so I can access the light bulbs at the back of the van without 
taking apart my uh, my permanent woodwork. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, this is my first video like this, so please be gentle in the comments. Uh, feel free to subscribe. I will have more videos in the future on my van. You can also find me on Instagram at Dell Loose Photography. Thanks.